once upon a time, those were Phillips head. And they've taken a chisel to this. I have some problem with the driver's side rear drum brake locking up. And I'm trying to take it off, and this has an interesting setup where the drum is actually bolted to the axle. And it's hard. And I'm having to use a breaker method because I don't have any fancy tools for it. So I'm just using a very large wrench and a ratchet tool, or a tire tool. Any port in a storm, I guess, right? Yeah. But the wrench makes it very useful. You can use it with another wrench, too. And it's a little safer than using a, a pipe because you can you're more in touch with what's going on so you're a little less likely to break something although I have broke a wrench a few times I better step out of your way yeah. of course from this angle it looks more like a hair club for men advertisement than it does a <laughs> breaking bolts loose This is why you wear a helmet when you do stupid things. <laughs> so people don't see your bald spot? So you don't get as much of a bald spot as early. Okay. That too. Doesn't like having your scalp stretched to make your hair thin. Oh. I gotta do one thing or it's gonna be really hard. Turn off the parking brake. So why'd you put it on in the first place? So I could take those bolts off. Okay. Otherwise it would have just spun, which means that setup would be difficult without having a parking brake you'd use. Nice rhythm. Remember, screwdrivers are not hammers. <laughs> <laughs> and drum brakes are not drums. Yeah. Well, technically it's got drum in the name, so... drive on a lot of dust. That's really useful. <laughs> the little the little bumper that's supposed to catch it when it bottoms out is just laying in there. <laughs> Me thinks it's a little old. Yeah. I think the suspension needs redone. Well it's captured in there real good at least. That's going to be a future project. I'm going to replace the suspension on this and uh, probably put a little bit of a lift on it. Not a massive lift, just an inch or two at most, which is supposed to be no more than 25% of the travel of the suspension. Hmm. So an inch without, or two? Without modifying your drive line. Otherwise, you stress the connection points and the axles. If you have uh, this solid axle back here, it would be a stress on the drive shaft. On the front, it would actually be on the CV axles. So an inch or two or 40? Yeah, normally all you get is an inch or two before you have to start doing some mod major modifications. Unless you really want to replace drive line components all the time. Looks like I wasn't kidding about that cutting torch. Yeah. This is the most difficulty I've ever had on getting a drum brake off. And I've had them rusted on before. Normally, you pound on it a few times, you can break it loose. I was going to ask about those. I'm hoping they're not log screws, because it shouldn't have log screws. This is Kia. They do a thousand things I shouldn't do. <laughs> and it still runs and works fine. That's the amazing part about it. And they are chewed the heck up, too. Looks like you weren't the first person. I 
I don't even know why they're on there. I've seen lock screws like that on a disc before, but never on a drum. Break loose. No, what is that? Hang on, what is that? PB blaster here. Let me see the can. Oh. Also not a sponsor. Not sponsored, sadly. And it's pretty good for breaking bolts and stuff loose. You just gotta be careful if you're using it around plastics and rubbers. There's some components that they it will break down. It's a drum brake. They normally are just held on by most cars. The drum brake just held on by the wheel. They take the wheel off, the drum brake can come off. Hmm. I've never seen one with this complex of a setup. Well, it should be a quick, easy project, but it's proving otherwise. Isn't that the case with all of our quick, easy projects? Mm-hmm. Three simple steps. Step 18. <laughs> I've never seen these on anything. It was those discs on that Renegade hmm. that they welded in so you couldn't take the discs off. They used red Loctite on them, so they were impossible without putting a lot of heat on them. And these, looks like someone has destroyed them trying to get this thing off before. Once upon a time, those were Phillips head. And they've taken a chisel to this. If they actually got them off, I hope they weren't so weren't dumb enough to put them back in. So if you learn nothing else today, learn that you can't chisel out screws. It doesn't work. No, if you want to reuse them. But, you can't get the drum off, so it's not locked up now. I'm trying to see what's causing it. It's still scrubbing a little bit though. of your head and part of the wheel well, but hey, that might work. Climbing in, which is not recommended. Brake. Okay. Oh, definitely breaking well. Okay, release it. Scrum well, but it's not bad. Press. Release. It's got to get this off to look at it. More than likely what it is is one of the springs is going bad. Because drum brakes rely on return springs. And if you get a return spring that's not returning the brakes, they scrub. Hmm. So drum brake scrubbing tends to either be a bad return spring, so it's not pulling it back in, a bad uh, adjuster that's over adjusting the brakes out and causing them to scrub, Either it's, been, it's just not working properly or it's in backwards or it's going to be a cylinder that's not releasing pressure. It's, that can be either a line clog or it can be just a worn cylinder. It somehow managed to work a groove and the groove is catching. But unfortunately it acted bad all day yesterday. Today it's behaving so I can't even judge why it feels like why it's scrubbing. Or why it was scrubbing. Translation brakes. For some reason, it's always the driver's side rear. Dims the brakes. Huh? I got dad jokes for days. Oh, you can see all the brake dust from it over cooking yesterday. All that black brake dust. I'm 
guessing those are lock screws because this is not moving and it's moving free. And I don't even have the faintest idea how I'm going to go about getting those out. The only thing you could do is I guess you could weld a bolt to it and try to break them that way. You got a short fatty? No, I don't have anything I can use on that. And they're too stripped out. There's not enough screw head left. And they've been chiseled so that even if I could turn them, I doubt they're going to come out. They're probably going to be cut out. And I don't have a cut torch. So, can we just spray brake cleaner in there and rinse it out? Is that if, something? If we could get that off, we could clean the components off, but with it sealed like that, putting brake cleaner in it would stand the risk of, if there's a lot of material built up, making clumps of that material and it could actually make more issues. It could jam a spring or get caught up in the mechanism somewhere. Drum brakes are dependent on a spring system to return them. And more than likely, that's why it's scrubbing is the springs aren't pulling, either the springs aren't pulling the brakes back or the auto adjuster is messed up and it's over adjusting. I've got to figure out how I'm going to get these two triple redundant lock off of it. But they've been chewed up and I have no means. I'm probably going to have to get someone to cut them out, which means I need a new drum. So, right now it's broke loose, and I'm hoping that if it was just something caught up in the mechanism, knocking all this dust out, and you can hear something I've noticed is you hear the spring resonate now. And when I started this, the springs weren't resonating. So it could just be built up debris, and the springs were causing problems. But that's wishful thinking, probably, but hey. Who knows? Sometimes taking a hammer to something fixes it. If nothing else helps you feel better. Yeah. Well, there's another thing you could do. Hear me out. You have four wheels. Technically, you only need three. If you take that wheel on the other side, just slide it over into the middle. You get a three-wheeler. Yes. The problem with that is I've already got three-wheel drive open rear diff so when this thing locks down that will just all the traction which is aggravating on loose gravel you end up having to use four wheel drive when you really don't need it so this thing I don't know it's done it once before and it broke loose and behaved for a long time it did again yesterday and this morning when I got out here it was fine so and I'm probably just going to have to redone which I could do if I could get the thing off. But I need a cutting torch and probably a welding torch because the only way I can think of is you heat them up, you weld a bolt to them, and then you can use an impact driver. Another thing I don't have to break them out. And that's about all I can come up with a way to get it off. Which I have no welding equipment. Catch is there. But it doesn't feel like the brakes are dra dragging in here. I'm, I kind of go back and forth from it being the rear end. I know the rear end's badly worn, and I've had a couple times where it feels like, feels like it's getting caught between gears. So there's just the fact that the gears on the axle and the gears on the diff aren't matching up properly. And that causes the lock up. And it only happens in reverse. But normally, since you put in drive, it'll go strain a little bit, it'll pop, and it'll be good. Well, yesterday it did not do that. So yesterday it was the brake, not the, it behaved like it was the brake having a problem and not the parking brake, which is the most common thing for that is the parking brake cable. But that one, parking brake cable is not causing me any problems because it's releasing and, un and letting go easily. I mean, it's only a 21 year old vehicle. How old, how much of a possibility is it that the rear end could be causing that? Really? 
the fact that the rear end was full of metal shavings when I changed the fluid when I had the fluid changed. Pretty good. Because that would explain why that wheel is getting favored. This one could be stripped. But it's actually moving the drive shaft, did you see? Look in there. It's moving the drive shaft easily. So it's connected fine and I'm not feeling a whole lot of play. It doesn't have a whole lot of play. Most of that's joint. So So it's gotta be brake malfunction. But it doesn't have a soft line. So it's not gonna be a soft line collapsing. And that was my first thought, because that's a common problem for brake issues. It's more than likely what's wrong with my Buick. Is the soft line going to the rear wheel is uh, collapsing, so it's not letting the fluid back out. So causing the brakes to stay actuated. Okay, so translation, taking a hammer to it could fix things. Yeah, if it's if it was just a catching spring, it's possible the vibration broke whatever was causing it to catch loose. And you got a bunch of more dust down there. Yeah. So, don't feel like a bearing. Is, is there yeah. any other checks we can do with it jacked up in the air right now to on this thing? Well, if you look here, you can see the I got to replace the suspension. You've got shocks rusted through, the covers rusted through, these shocks are shot. The spring shot, that is a bumper that's supposed to be actually I think on the top that when you bottom out, you hit that instead of hitting metal on metal and that's just free floating in there it's captured well you can't get it out but it's not really doing much at least it's still there though yeah so it's a component this is a later project the suspension is bad it needs to be replaced it's just age even if you don't have a lot of driving these things well they get old and fail after a while because they have all kinds of rubber components and different things that you know, decay with age. Even the fluids can lose some of their viscosity with age. Well, they welded it. <laughs> they welded the bracket to the suspension to solve the problem that the bracket was broken. And uh, then the bracket broke off. <laughs> so that's what's rattling so horribly back here. Hey, I can solve that problem though. see what I can do with that. Here's where I say duct tape can fix a lot of things. Okay, well, couldn't do anything with the brake, but I found something with the muffler. Figured out why it was rattling. The hanger that I have replaced with aluminum wire, the hanger right here, had uh, broke where they had welded it to the muffler and this and this were rattling against each other and rattling against and this was bouncing back and forth rattling against the uh, muffler making a whole lot of racket but when I tried to remove it the bolt sheared off and the well there's no light but in the bracket there you can kind of see so I took some aluminum wire wired it up and no more horrendous rattling from back here and my shocks definitely need replaced that one's bleeding but that's another future project what they mean when they say impact drill well when you don't have one it kind of works like one Shouldn't go anywhere. Well, if it does, you will know immediately. Oh, that's okay. I've got three more wheels. True. Oh. Now I gotta get all the parts out of here. 
I wonder what that lock went to. <laughs> a lock pin. I wonder what that went to. I don't know. I don't know where it should be, so. <laughs> yeah. I figure you find out 50 miles an hour down the road. Like I said, I got three more wheels. I've had a wheel pass me before. Not in this thing, luckily. In this thing you have a wheel pass you, it's going to be while you're sliding on the side down the highway. Nah, nah, I just kept going right along. There's an old brown wagon here and the axle let go and the rear axle let go and the front, see, passenger side rear wheel broke loose, came out, hit the passenger side door, went off in the ditch and the wagon here just kept going. Yeah. I knew the impact so I stopped and pulled over and realized, oh, hello, I lost a wheel. Well, like I said, in this thing, you'll notice when it's on its side, skidding down the highway. Oh, yeah, I lost a wheel. Eh. High center of gravity. Yeah, but I don't really worry too much about that. I don't think it would notice it as bad because it doesn't seem to notice the fact there's no suspension on that side. <laughs> True. So, so what happens if this wheel falls off and that wheel actually touches the road? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Plug, so cross pattern. As if you've ever done tires before, you know. There is a torque rating. I just do it by hand. If you have nice wheels, nice hubs, nice lugs. And you're very concerned, learn your torque ratings, use a torque wrench. If you're crazy like I am, just tighten it up. But make sure you don't strip them because you can. I have busted off lugs before. Just shear them straight off because some of these vehicles have pretty low tighting points because it's, well, some of them are brass or different metals. So. Okay. So some of them are pretty sensitive. Something like this, it's just hard steel. It's not that big a deal. Just don't lock it too much. You want it to stay good and tight and be good and firm. I think a lot of the standard, I'd have to look up the standard risers. I know it's one of those, you tighten it, and you get where you it doesn't tighten anymore when you're going around, and you're not standing on it, you're not jumping on it, just tighten it firm, and it's tight. So I shouldn't jump on it when I'm tightening it? No, unless you really want to buy new stems. And impact driver, if you use an impact driver, make sure you set it to the exact weight it's supposed to be. Otherwise, they aren't coming off. And at best, you can actually, I'll show you what happens when you use an impact driver at way too high a weight, right? And you don't break the stems. You end up with driving the lugs through the wheel. This actually happened from a tire shop. And someone didn't know what they were doing. They used an impact driver until it wasn't tightened anymore. They absolutely drove the lugs through the wheel. Destroyed the lugs too. They were acorn shape. Now they're flat. So, and they went almost clear through the wheel. So this is what happens when you abuse an impact driver. That's why you just stand on it, right? Don't stand on it. So that's all for this one? Yeah, for this one. That should be it for now. Okay. Because I couldn't get the drum off. <laughs> but it's working-ish, maybe? It's working fine now. Whatever it hung up is not hung up anymore. I'm guessing it's going to need the springs replaced in it. It probably needs a full job done. I do it myself. I've done it before. I hate working on drum brakes, but I can't get those off. That lock screw those two lock screws have been so destroyed there's no way I'll ever get it off so I'm gonna end up having to take it to my mechanic and he's gonna cuss at me about it but it's not my fault this time I did not do that damage <laughs> that's what they all say uh, okay well thank you very much please like share with your friends if you enjoyed it and if you didn't share it with the enemies after all why should you suffer alone and return for There'll be more projects, and not even all of them are going to be car projects. 
we promise. So long.